why do we do this every year, man? I can't feel my fingers. Hey, if anyone ask you guys what the Finnish Sisu is all about, show them this video. <sighs> let's do this again, but before that, let's go home. <laughs> So what if I told you there's a way to boost your athletic performance by up to 200% and it's even being touted as being more efficient for recovery than sleep and even more powerful than the use of steroids. Well, what is it? It is potentially the most underrated tool for boosting your sports performance. So today we're going to be discussing how we can use the cold or in this case hand cooling of the palms during our workouts to even outperform somebody who would be on anabolic steroids. So what we are talking about here is managing your body's temperature. When I was a kid, I realized that mixing hot and cold water allowed me to recover better from skateboarding. But it has to be done the right way, so let's discuss how. For instance, if you put a cold pack on your neck, it might feel great, but that is not the right way to do it, as putting, for instance, a cooling pack on your neck won't give you the effect that you want. Sure, it will feel great, but it won't be effective for cooling you down. It could be comparable to putting a wet cloth on your thermostat while your house is on fire. So allow me to elaborate. While I've been doing the Wim Hof method for over five years now, these days it's an essential part of my daily life. Essentially, it's about doing deep breathing and cold showers in the morning, as it's been shown to significantly reduce sick day leaves. I think it's really effective. But doing the Wim Hof method post-workout is perhaps the least optimal time to do, except when you're filming a badass Sisu intro for YouTube. Now the performance tools that we discussed today are for educational purposes. Remember, I'm just an average guy who absolutely loves fitness and is always open to try new things. Always train on your own level, start with the essentials, and when you're ready, move on to the fundamentals. Our bodies and minds can do amazing things, but always stick to your own level. So why is cold water or ice bad after a workout? Well, this is because the cold downregulates the mTOR pathway, which is involved in muscular strength adaptations, as well as reducing muscle protein synthesis, a metabolic process that allows you to repair muscle damage caused by intense exercise. Now we discussed this in my previous video on the Wim Hof method, which was hugely popular, and it's linked at the end of this one. Also, other risks related to the Wim Hof method will be discussed in another video. So today we're going to be discussing how we can use the cold, or in this case, hand cooling of the palms during our workouts to even outperform somebody who would be on anabolic steroids. So cool water around 15 degrees Celsius can be very beneficial for both anaerobic and aerobic exercise performance. This is according to Professor Craig Heller at Stanford University, who discussed this on Stanford University neuroscientist Andrew Huberman's podcast, the absolute staggering results that can arise from exercising together with the use of hand cooling. For instance, in this study by Craig Heller and his colleagues, they showed that palm cooling increased work volume by 144% in pull-ups. And also, one of the co-authors in this study was a self-proclaimed Gym rat, he was able to go from 180 pull ups in one workout session to over 620 pull ups in a workout session over a training period of six weeks. Now, this is a over 200% performance increase, so quite staggering. Now, according to Professor Hiller, this works due to that our hands, feet, and even face have a network of veins, so called avus, called arteriovenous anastomosis. I don't know how you pronounce it properly, but yeah. Anyways, these veins seem to function for rapid temperature management. In other words, when you grab something that's cool but not cold, it will actually start to cool down your core temperature. So the question is, why not cool down the whole body? Well, of course, we are mammals and we used to have fur almost covering the whole body. And according to Dr. Craig Heller, these areas still function as great insulators, meaning that they can't actually absorb the cold, so they are not as effective for down-regulating your core temperature. 
So when we cool down our hands, we're actually not cooling down the muscles, we are cooling down the core temperature of our bodies. Still, I was skeptical with these insane performance boosts, and especially when we compare it to the use of steroids. When you compare Palmer cooling to anabolic steroids in terms of gym performance, what do you see? The bottom line is that in all of these independent studies, their rate of improvement was approximately 1% per week. Okay. Okay. Now I've just told you about studies in which we've had 300% increase in a month. <laughs> So <laughs> it's an enormous, yeah. enormous difference. So the use of steroids in several studies have shown that it only increases athletic performance by 1% per week. So basically 4% in a month. So it really gets left in the dust when we compare it to the hand cooling. So what do you think about this cold hype? Do you think this cooling of the core is efficient or is it more the placebo effect? Well, the placebo sometimes, of course, also can be a very positive one. As long as something works, it works, right? So, of course, I had to put this to the test, as this became my secret weapon when I pursued the muscle-up world record during my lunch breaks. The video you can also find at the end of this one. So, most of my workouts were around 30 to 40 minutes long, as I was on a strict schedule working in our startup. So these lunch workouts were mainly consisting of six sets of muscle ups, reps to failure. And along the journey, I incorporated hand cooling of the palms. And as you can see here, the results were staggering. When I was competing for the muscle up world record, you could really see how my performance was getting boosted. And also that the subsequential sets after the first set that I went reps to failure, I was able to keep a really great pace. There wasn't a significant drop in the amount of repetitions I was able to do compared to the beginning of the training for the muscle up world record. Now, essentially, I was able to build lean muscle mass, increase my VO2 max, and go from 15% body fat to 5% body fat in a mere 90 days. And I think hand cooling was really great because it allowed me to keep the workout short and also put in really, really intense work. During the workouts, I thought that I will be so sore the next day, but it actually never happened. I felt like I could work out the next day. Now, similar findings were made by Professor Heller and his colleagues. Now, they also concluded that the sports performance boost was permanent. And that was the same thing for me, even though long after this training journey, I'm able to go really hard with the muscle ups without using hand cooling. So this supposed mechanism is extremely beneficial for increasing training volume and recovery time. This is by the use of cooling gloves. Now, I didn't have the luxury of having these cooling gloves. So what I did every other set was that I went to the bathroom at the gym and put my hands below lukewarm water around 15 degrees Celsius for two to three minutes. Now we're lucky here that in Finland, that's what the cold water from the tap is around. Now, if you live somewhere where you don't have this luxury, another thing that you could do is to pass an ice cube between hands or for instance, frozen berries. Now, of course, that could look pretty ridiculous at the gym, but I think it also works. Also, if the water or the ice is too cold for too long on your hands, it will actually constrict the veins, which will mean that you can't cool down the core. One way of knowing that if you went too cold is to grab your friend's you hand. Son of a bitch. And if your hand is cold, it means that you went too far because it should be at a normal temperature. Now, this is really interesting because when we train hard, it is not necessarily the muscle itself that gets fatigued and runs out of oxygen or glucose but an enzyme, peruviate kinase, gets shut down, which muscles need in order to generate chemical energy and is highly temperature sensitive. Now, at normal body temperature, the enzyme is active, but as temperature rises, some of the enzyme begins to deform into the inactive state. So by the time muscle temperatures get too high, the enzyme completely shuts down. Now, from a biological standpoint, there's a very good reason why the enzyme shuts down. As a muscle cell increases its activity, it heats up. If it goes on for too long, the cell will self-destruct. By shutting itself down below a critical temperature threshold, it sort of protects your body from actually overheating and in come the cooling of your palms. So if you want to outperform MMA fighters and even Olympic athletes, use hand cooling 
in between sets in order to boost your sports performance. Now, of course, if you have access to these cooling gloves, that's another thing, but I don't think many of us actually have. So hand cooling below tap water could be one thing or passing an ice pack between your hands or a pack of berries. Now for strength training, do this in between every other set for two to three minutes. And the big no-no was to not do Wim Hof method after training, which we discussed in another video linked at the end of this one, and also not to put a cold pack on your neck. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video valuable. I'll see you guys in the next video.